Hello everybody, in this video we are going to discuss the increasing and decreasing functions with its definition and examples. I have put a lot of effort in explaining the examples, so don't miss the examples part of this video. When that being said, let's move on with the video. I am having a giveaway on this channel, please check the description box for the rules. And yeah, please subscribe to make sure your maths teacher never gets mad at you. Alright. First of all, look at the definition. Let f be a function that is differentiable on an open interval. What is an open interval, you may ask? So, an open interval is any interval that does not include its endpoints. I'm not going to go in the detail of open intervals because for increasing and decreasing intervals, you don't need to go into the detail. Leave it for higher mathematics. So the function is increasing on the interval a to b if its derivative is positive or greater than zero for all values of that interval. And similarly, f is decreasing on the interval a to b if its derivative is negative or less than zero for all values of that interval. Also, any point where f is neither increasing nor decreasing is a stationary point. And we find the stationary points by putting f dash of x equals to zero. So basically, we take derivative of the function and then check for what values of x f dash of x is positive or negative or neither. So moving on to the first example in which we have to find the values of x for which the following quadratic function is increasing or decreasing. Also, we need to find the stationary points of this function. So what is a quadrating function? If you don't know, quadratic function is a function whose greatest power is equal to 2. So moving on to the solution. First of all, find out the derivative of the function. So the derivative of x square plus 2x minus 3 is 2x plus 2. I am sure you know how to take derivative of a function, but if you have any confusion, let me know and I will create a dedicated video on the derivative of a function. Next step is to put f dash of x greater than 0 to find the values for which f is increasing. So by doing so, we obtained that for x greater than minus 1, f dash of x is positive. Hence, f of x is increasing for the interval minus 1 to infinity. As the domain of the function is not defined in this case, so we assume it to be the set of real numbers which is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Step number three is to put f dash of x less than zero to find the values for which f is decreasing. And by doing so, we obtain that for x less than minus one, f dash of x is negative. Hence, f of x is decreasing for the interval negative infinity to negative 1. Step number 4 is for finding the stationary points. And we find the stationary points by putting f dash of x equal to 0. And by doing so, we obtained for x equal to minus 1, f of x is neither increasing nor decreasing. But as we know, a stationary point is a point that means it has both x and y coordinates. So we put x equals to minus 1 in f of x to obtain the y coordinate. Hence, f of x is neither increasing nor decreasing for the point minus 1, minus 4. Moving on to the example number 2. In this example, we need to find the values of x for which the following cubic function is increasing or decreasing. Also, we need to find the stationary points. Uh, what is a cubic function, you may ask? So a cubic function is a function whose greatest power is equal to 3. So moving on to the solution. First of all, find out the derivative of the function as we have done earlier. As we know, the derivative of uh, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x is 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Next, we simplify 
f dash of x a little bit. This will help us to find the values of x later. All right, moving on to the next step. Similarly, as we have done earlier, we put f dash of x greater than zero to find the values for which f is increasing. And by doing so, we obtained that x is either greater than one or x is either greater than three. But this gives us a very vague information about the values of x. We are not sure whether x is greater than one or is it greater than three. So when that happens, we cannot follow the same procedure as we were following earlier. And what we learned from this experience is when the function is not quadratic, we use another method. So you must be wondering what is the other method? And the answer is in the next slide. We move back to step number one and find the values of x by putting f dash of x equal to zero. By doing so, we obtained x equal to one or x equals to three. So we got two values of x. Next, we do some rough work to find the values of x for which function is increasing or decreasing. So first of all, we draw the number line. As the domain of the function is not defined in this example, so we assume it to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now we plot all the points we obtained, which are one and three in this case. We can see the three intervals here, negative infinity to one, one to three, and three to infinity. Now we check all these intervals to see where f of x is increasing and decreasing. But how? So let's move on to the next slide to find out how we do this. To find out at which interval f of x is increasing or decreasing, take any one value from each of these intervals, put them in f dash of x and see if it gives a positive value or a negative one like this. So I took these values 0, 2 and 4 but you can also take any value of your choice from these intervals. Let's say you take x equals to minus 1 from the interval negative infinity to 1 and it will still give you a positive answer. Lastly what we have obtained from our rough work is for interval negative infinity to 1 and 3 to infinity, f dash of x is positive, which implies f of x is increasing according to our definition. For the interval 1 to 3, f dash of x is negative, so this implies that f of x is decreasing in this interval. And for x equals to 1 and x equals to 3, f of x is equal to 0. So this implies that f of x is neither increasing nor decreasing. You can also put x equals to 1 and x equals to 3 in f of x to find the exact stationary points as we have done in the example number 1. So that's it for the video. I hope you learned something from today's video. Please subscribe to my channel and share this video as much as you can. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.